group of women between the ages of 65 and 75 was interviewed. These interviews were the most poignant, possibly because many of these women had never had a vagina interview before. One woman, who was 72, had never even seen her vagina. She washed herself in the shower and bath, but never with conscious intention. She had never had an orgasm. At 72, she went into therapy, as they do in New York, and with the help of her therapist, she went home one afternoon by herself, lit some candles, took a bath, played some music, and got down with herself. She said it took her over an hour because she was arthritic, but when she, fin <laughs> <laughs> but when she finally found her clitoris, she said she cried. This monologue is for her. there. You just know it's there. Like the cellar. There's rumbles down there. <laughs> you can hear the pipes and things get caught there. <laughs> Little animals. <laughs> and it gets wet. And sometimes people have to plug up the leaks. <laughs> Otherwise, the door stays closed. You forget about it. I mean, it's part of the house, but you don't see it or think about it. It has to be there, though, because every house needs a cellar. Otherwise, the bedroom would be in the basement. <coughs> Andy? Andy left Cove? Right. Andy was very good looking. He was a catch. That's what we called it in my day. We were in his car, a new white Chevy Bel Air. I remember thinking that my legs were too long for the seat. I have long legs. They were smushed up against the dashboard. I was looking at my big kneecaps. What he just kiss me in this surprising, take me by control like they do in the movies kind of way. And I got excited. So excited and well. I 
wipe up the blood with my dress. It was a new yellow primrose dress. It looked so ugly with the blood on it. <laughs> Andy drove me home without saying another word. And when I got out, he closed his car door. I closed the whole store, locked it up, never opened for business again. I dated some after that, but the idea of flooding made me so nervous. I never even got close again. I used to have dreams, though, crazy dreams. Oh, they don't. Why? Burt Reynolds. <laughs> I don't know why. He never did much for me in this life. But in my dreams, it was always Bert and I, Bert and I, Bert and I. Oh, it was always the same general dream. We'd be out, Bert and I. It was some restaurant, like the kind you see in Atlantic City, all big with chandeliers and stuff, and thousands of waiters with the vests. Bert would give me this orchid corsage, I'd pin it on my blazer, we'd laugh. We were always laughing, Bert and I. <laughs> <laughs> laughing and laughing. We'd eat shrimp cocktail, huge shrimp, fabulous shrimp. We were very happy together. Then he'd look into my eyes and pull me to him in the middle of the restaurant. And just as he was about to kiss me, the whole restaurant would begin to shake, and pigeons would fly out from under the table. <laughs> I don't know what those pigeons were doing down there. And the flood would come straight from down there. It would pour out of me. It would pour and pour and pour. <laughs> there would be fish inside. <laughs>